I'm Larry with the Zoological Society, and I wanted to take a moment to thank you for supporting the Idaho Falls Zoo by purchasing one of the Wines in the Wild Home Edition packages. This year has been a crazy year with the coronavirus, but it has been especially devastating for non-for-profits who rely on fundraising events and the revenue they generate to fund our projects. So once again, I want to thank you for your support. I'd like to turn time, I'd like to introduce Travis to you and let him explain to you about the wines that you have in your packages. Thanks, Lori. Um, I'm Travis Cottle with Hayden Beverage. Uh, I'm here to introduce our wines uh, for our date night, for our VIP, and for our uh, executive VIP. Uh, I got Mick and Andrea uh, Omen here. Uh, to taste some wines with us. Let me get the water out of the way. Um, our first wine package was the date night, and we're going to be focusing on two wines um, out of Idaho, uh, Cinder Winery. We have uh, out of um, called what? Excuse me, out of the Boise area. Uh, what's the name? Garden City. That's the name of where the winery's at. Anyway, so this is our, our date night. We also have a cheese platter that I'll be bringing out that you guys should have at home and ready to go. Um, and I'll walk you through uh, each of the wines as we roll. So our first wine, guys, come on up, up here. and uh, They're going to be uh, tasting some wines with us so that uh, uh, they can enjoy the experience along with us. So we're going to be first highlighting Cinder Viognier. It's a dry Viognier which, uh, oh, I'm supposed to be doing that. I'm sorry, whoops, that way, see? Okay, Cinder Dry Viognier, which is a, you didn't drink all of yours when we got started, did you? No, well, I've you only didn't, been Rich. here for four hours. Yeah, shame on you, okay, all right. So Cinder Viognier, uh, let's talk about Cinder uh, briefly. Uh, Cinder is a winery founded in 2006 uh, by Melanie Krauss and Joe Schneer. Um, Melanie uh, did her internship with uh, Chateau Michel for three years, Canoe Ridge, I think, uh, and then also a, a, a winery previously. They opened up their own uh, shop in 2006 in Garden City. Um, they are uh, one of Idaho's premier wineries, and they make some of the best juice uh, around, period. Um, this is my favorite white wine that uh, Melanie makes, uh, and it's a dry Viognier. It's got uh, notes of uh, stone fruit, uh, pairs really, really well with some nice acidic foods. Um, on the cheese platter that you're going to get, and I don't know, uh, this is supposed to be all-encompassing, so I'm not exactly sure what everybody has at home, but the stone fruits are going to work really, really well with some of the, uh, or the Viognier, excuse me, is going to work really well with some of the, um, the fruits, uh, although the strawberries we'll get into it a little bit later. Um, also with, uh, with some of this, uh, the Swiss, uh, not so much on the brie side of it, I don't think. But don't don't feel bad about just getting in here and trying different things. That's one of the best parts about wine, is is taking it and experiencing it with friends and then trying it with new things. So, uh, Cinder Viognier, what do you guys think? Great. I've had the good fortune of having the Cinder wines before, and Viognier There's, is one of my favorites. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Viognier is is a grape that is uh, used as a blending grape traditionally. Um, it's uh, uh, just starting to, I think, in the last 10, 15 years, being coming out on a varietal of its own. Um, but it's it's absolutely delightful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You um, said it well. I want to. Uh, we need to plug the zoo here real quick. Um, this is a, a fundraiser, so you do need. Uh, we are encouraging anybody and everybody to please get on the website. If you got some more money to donate, please do. They could use all of the help they can get. www.tpzs uh, dot info. You can go to that website and you can uh, you can donate some more. So uh, please do. Let's so support our zoo. Absolutely. You say absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And we also have, by the way, later on in this thing, we have some special guests that are in the audience right now, and hopefully we do not hear from them until we're ready for them. But um, I'm, I'm. This is one wine that goes really well, well with seafood. So, um, you know, especially herring, which that might work real well. So uh, please try to get in here with some of the, the, the uh, fruits and cheeses. And oh, I uh, just couldn't. No, we no, no, no. <laughs> Well, okay. You know, what we didn't do is a dump bucket. Yeah. This might get really interesting. Who needs one okay. of those? <laughs> um, uh, for any type of a wine tasting, please 
Um, if you like it, swallow it. If you don't, dump it. It's, it's just wine. Um, but do keep in mind that uh, a bottle of wine is 25 ounces, so if you're doing a full tasting, as we're going to get into a little bit later, you know, start with a two-ounce pour and, and, and get yourself through. You can always come back and, and revisit everything, which is all the fun of it, right? So... It's very nice, very dry. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, go it's gorgeous, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, Melanie and Joe have been over here many, many times. Again, she was uh, born and raised in, uh, in Boise. Uh, Joe is a chemist by trade, and he dropped his career in order to, uh, to help the marketing and the sales side of things for his wife. She does all of the winemaking from start to finish. Wow. Um, they have uh, two beautiful kids. They have a daughter and a son. Uh, I think they're about that big now, somewhere in that well, area. Well, they used to be. They used to be, somewhere in that area. Remember the dinner we had yeah. a couple years ago with yeah. them? Joe lost a tooth in the middle of the dinner, <laughs> and it was hilarious. Was he, he was, yeah, anyway, he couldn't talk worth it. A little bit of a lisp. A little bit of a lisp. <laughs> All right, so let's get on to the second wine while we're here. So this next one is called um, Valentina, and I hope I got that in the right direction. Yep, oh, right there. All right, Valen, uh, uh, Valentina, which is actually a red Bordeaux that they've developed. Um, our, uh, our latitude, sorry, we got, I lost the uh, words here. Our latitude is very, very close to uh, Bordeaux in uh, France. So uh, grapes in Washington and Idaho, specifically in Washington, um, Cabernets, Merlots, Malbecs, uh, all of the, the grapes that go into Bordeaux are, uh, grow very, very well in those regions. So this is their, uh, this is their blend of a Bordeaux uh, wine. So it's a red Bordeaux uh, wine. It is uh, Cabernet, uh, Merlot, and Malbec, just the three. A lot of times in Bordeaux, you can also get Petit Bordeaux mm -hmm. or um, uh, a Cab Franc. Would be I was very, just going to ask yeah. you that. But really? Yeah, <laughs> like you know it's what a right Cab Franc is. Right on the tip of your tongue, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> well, let's, um, can we you... proceed to drinking now? Absolutely. Do we want a new glass or do you want to... I just happen to have one. Okay, you just have... <laughs> it hap happens to be the empty one, right? Okay. <laughs> Let me introduce you to some of my friends mm. back here. I plan to use them all. You plan to... Okay, we can do that. All right. <laughs> so, here we go. Here. You, yeah, okay, you do want a new glass. All right, here we go. Thank you. Ah, that looks grand. So now, on, on a red wine, one of the key parts on a red wine, especially when you're looking at uh, a couturier tray here, is you want to stay with things that are, have a lot of fat content. The more tannic your wine, which is, the, which is the, uh, the, the part underneath your tongue that makes you salivate, okay? The more tannic a wine, the more fat you want on uh, the food that you're eating. That's why it goes so well with like a ribeye steak. But salamis, chardonnays, any kind of cheese that has a lot of fat in it, what happens is that fat will put a coating on your tongue and it'll smooth out those tannins so that the wine becomes a smoother uh, presentation, okay? Travis, uh, I don't recognize which of these is the steak. The steak, well that would be, you know, these things cut up really, really thinly. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Cheers? Mm, Cheers. Great. Salute. It's very good, mm. very nice. Don't forget to get your nose all the way in the glass because mm -hmm. this is wine and it's yeah meant to be enjoyed. Mm. There seems to be some notation on my glass too. Ooh, what is that? You could uh, note that. Drink Idaho uh, wine. And the other side as well. Oh, wines in the wild. Would that be why we're here? I would I, guess that yes. to be one of the reasons. Don't forget to go to www.tpzs.info. Okay. What is it? Okay, let me tell you, <laughs> www.tpzs.info. I've got it okay? until I forget. Okay, until you forget. We'll, we'll remind you in just a few All minutes. Right. How's that? Andrea, what do you think so far? That's great. Um, so this, nice. is, this has got some really big, uh, bold flavors, some yes. really, really nice uh, uh, black uh, cherry, some... Mm. Uh, the notes from Melanie, actually, she says there's some pumpkin spice in here, yeah. which I'm not... Do you get that? Flowery yeah? at the end. Mm. Yeah, yes, so now definitely. try this. You want to try this. Get into the uh, blue cheeses, um, some of the salamis. Um, well, this will pair beautifully with all of that. Cabernet uh, and Merlot are both tannic wines. They're both very heavy. Um, Mer Malbec can be a lot more fruity. Uh, that'll, that's what's giving it some of the brightness on top of it. Merlot will give it some of the structure. Um, I don't know what 
percentages are on all of these. But So part of our date night, so our date night is going to continue through uh, onto the other levels uh, or on a, onto the other packages that, that were out there for our VIP. So everybody should have both of these wines. Um, I was just visiting their website today, so I, I encourage you guys to get onto Cinder's website. Um, they've got some beautiful uh, uh, information on, on their family, on the vineyards, and what, what, where they come from. And it's just a, it's a, it's a fantastic, homegrown, mm -hmm. local winery. Uh, and it's actually called Cinder because what's, what is the layers of, uh, of, uh, Perhaps volcanic cinder? soil. Yeah, hey, you're you're right. <laughs> I you get it all cube. from him, don't you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Delightful yes. wines made by delightful people. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, I need some of that salami here. You guys want any of this? No. Okay. All right. There, you know, other people out here too. You know. So. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anyone out there. Yeah. No. Yeah, well, you're blind then. Okay. Oops. All right. Uh, you guys got any questions on this? Yeah, is there more? <laughs> we got a few more to go through here first. Then we'll revisit. Remember, uh, two ounce pours. Yes, Andrea. Okay. The Malbec. The Malbec. Really mm -hmm. presents at the end. Yes, and that's that bright fruit. Uh, absolutely, at the bright, bright fruit on the very end of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, where is uh, where's Malbec found from? You know? Mm. It's one of Argentina. the noble grains of, of Bordeaux. And it's actually considered one of the uh, the, uh, the disappeared ones because it, it resurfaced in Argentina and okay. Chile, and it's uh, mainly known for coming out of that area. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If our audience were interested in getting uh, some of these wines, where would they get them? So all of these wines are uh, available at Brolham's uh, Fine Foods. Uh, also, all of the uh, Brolham's Fresh Foods. I, I got their I got their saying wrong, so I apologize. Uh, also, all of the cheese platters are available out of Brolham's. Um, for holidays, uh, for any type of special events. Not every bottle that we have here tonight is in Brolam's, but they can all, you can always order it with the manager and we'll be happy to provide it to them. Or provide it to you, excuse me. Now where was that again? Brolam's Fresh Foods, <laughs> okay? Right. Uh, and, and, oh, Andrew, do you remember where we're gonna go, what website we're going to? Uh, www. <laughs> Cheater. TPZ. <laughs> S. S. Not info. info. Yes, there you go. Okay. What so, is it again? No, we'll get back to it. All right. <laughs> don't, don't kill a dead horse. Mm. Did you try it with some of the salami? Yeah. That is very nice. Oh, it's delicious. That's a meal. Um, I'm told I'm going to be available uh, during uh, this broadcast on Friday, uh, which is, I guess, where this is live, right? So I'll be available for questions uh, if you have them through this on any of the wines. Mmm. It's a little awkward uh, eating on camera, so. And Travis, <laughs> was it you who uh, selected the wines for this event? Um, and how did you do it? Um, I wanted to, well, first of all, uh, we needed to, to highlight a, a local winery, so Cinder uh, uh, immediately came to mind, mm -hmm. uh, and it was one of Lori's uh, uh, recommendations. And then I just uh, started picking some very good scoring wines that, that are a little unique. Um, and that we uh, that people possibly haven't enjoyed in quite a while. Mm -hmm. So well, it's early, but I'll compliment you already. Well, yeah. thank you very much. We're yeah. up to a very good start. Yeah. Very good. I've i visited several of these wineries, uh, actually uh, most of them. So um, they're they're uh, they're very dear to my heart. So all right, we're gonna um, let's uh, regroup the table real quick. We're just gonna move the uh, uh, the uh, cheese over just a titch, and let's um, get ready for. The next, uh, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. So, we're gonna bring up this bad boy. Okay, so. Now we're getting serious. Now this should be uh, the uh, the VIP package, correct? Okay, so this, uh, hopefully, those of you with the VIP package, you uh, you are unpacking all of this right now, or should be knee deep into it already, right? So, because we've already gone through the uh, the Cinder Viognier, we've done the Cinder Tempranillo. We're gonna jump back into a couple more whites uh, as we present through this box. And then uh, and then we have an executive 
one package that we're gonna be substituting a couple different wines. I'll explain all of that when we get there, and that's heavy. Okay. I didn't know this job involved heavy lifting. Yeah, well, I didn't either. I'm here to help you lighten Obviously, the load. Obviously, my physique looks like I'm not really into it either, doesn't it? I'll um, help you lighten the load. Okay, good. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. We don't want to take anything home, None of that. No Always of that. some of this. Always rinse in between <laughs> uh, varietals. It, it'll do your palate good. What's your favorite animal at the zoo? The next one. <laughs> That's the drink, not oh, the oh, animal. Oh, oh, oh. I, I think uh, maybe a, a penguin or a wallaby would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder if any of them are around. Because I love to go to our zoo, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Don't we all? Don't we all? I uh, I just have I have a brand new grandbaby. So well, not brand new. He's, in the zoo? He's, not in the zoo. Oh, 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 he's, oh. But he's two. His name's <laughs> Alex Harrington, and uh, uh, I can't wait to take him this this uh, excellent this fall. So. Uh, they they literally, thankfully, just got over COVID and uh, ah. are recovering well. So, Andrea, what's your favorite animal? Then we should all drink pip. to that. We should all drink to that. Yes, pip. yes. Which the one? famous Pip. What's Pip? Pip. I don't the know Pip. Penguin Pip. I don't know Pip. You don't spend enough I, time. I don't spend. It's been a few years. Okay. Yes. Okay. You should be introduced to Pip. Oh. Did we bring Pip? Is Pip here? I Pip know. is here. <gasps> oh. Right oh, here. Is there any way we can actually? Get off script and see Pip real quick. No, never mind. We'll get to Pip in a bit. <laughs> Hang on. No, no, we're good. Okay. And perhaps I can Next make one. room for. Oh. We, Pip's, Pip's, Pip's coming. Pip's coming. Pip's coming. Pip's coming. Oh. Let me step aside cool. for Pip. We're going to see Pip. Let me step aside for Pip. <laughs> Would you shut my phone off? I forgot to silence it. I thought I did. <gasps> oh. 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 Okay. Let's get this yeah. out of the way. Okay. This is Pip, huh? This is Pip. She is a one-year-old African black-footed oh. penguin. She's been very patiently waiting. <laughs> so African penguins are an endangered species. Um, unfortunately, that's all due to human activity. So things like oil spills, overfishing, climate change, all of those are really negatively affecting African penguin populations. So that's why we have them at the Idaho Falls Zoo. So we work with other institutions internationally to make sure that the way that we're breeding keeps their genes as diverse as possible. Um, that way, if we do need to repopulate the wild, we have the means to do so. Um, so Pip here is, of course, a product of that um, really intense breeding program. So she's the youngest penguin that we have at the Idaho Falls Zoo today. Um, our oldest is 27. So these guys live 10 to 15 years in the wild, um, double that under human care. So no predators, solid food source, Ill, or uh, medicines if they get ill, those kinds of things all lend themselves to a, a longer lifespan. Um, she good looks- wine? Is good wine part of that? <laughs> that of that's for me, not oh, for the oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, So <laughs> she looks a little bit differently than the rest of her counterparts at the zoo, um, just because she's younger. So here in the next year or so, she'll lose all these baby feathers and big, get in her big kid feathers. So she's a very <laughs> sweet little lady. So that little head shake, um, is an attention seeking behavior. So that's her letting me know that she's happy to be hanging out with, with everybody here. Um, these guys are, since I said they're, they're from Africa, these guys are, um, more temperate penguins. So we usually think of penguins as being on snow and ice. Most penguin species are actually in warmer climates. So that means that here in Idaho, we have to be a little bit more concerned about them being too cold than too hot, which always sounds weird. Um, that being said, she's pretty tough. So during the winter, um, almost always they get to choose whether they want to be inside or outside. It's just those really, really frigid days that we, um, keep them inside with a couple of swimming pools. Um, Pip here has both of her parents and her older brother at our zoo. Um, she does not have a name band just yet because we just don't have one in for her yet. Um, but almost everybody else does. So just when you guys are at the zoo, you'll see that um, there's all different colors of name bands. If the band is on the right wing of a penguin, it's a boy. Left wing is a girl. And anybody that has a matching colored penguin name tag to another penguin is a mated pair. So there's kind of a little cutesy oh. hidden code <laughs> in our um, penguin bracelets. What do you think? Will they, will they uh, maintain their, their spots? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. So they will. And those spots are unique to every single individual. So wow. just like our fingerprints are unique to us, those spots can be um, I, an identifying factor in them. May I pet her? Sure. And penguins mate for life, don't they? They um, are very monogamous. Yeah. So I have a pair that's been together since, I know, since 1997. Um, 
at the zoo, we get a little bit more um, drama that goes on because they're not having to fight for resources. So they have more time to get into some Jerry Springer style drama. So so we get some soap opera drama occasionally. Um, but for the most part, they are very, very monogamous. Absolutely. It takes both parents to raise chicks. So... Once oh. they find somebody that helps them out, they usually stick with them. Oh, wow. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah. She is, and she knows it. She, yeah, yeah. she is just showing her yeah, stuff she's got on her camera, hand. right? All right, we'll let you guys get back to And they smell a your... lot better in person oh. than they do at the zoo. Yeah. Well, no that... offense there. I'm no, no offense, Pep. I'm, they you know, look yeah. uh, They do. So she, she oh. birds have a little bit of an oil that they produce and oh. distribute along oh. their feathers to help keep them waterproof. Um, so that's why she, she looks kind of shiny. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, these feathers keep them completely waterproof when they are swimming. So oh, even wow. though they're in Africa, they're in South Africa, Namibia, um, the water where the fish hang out that they are hunting is cold. And so that means that they have to be able to tolerate heat on land, cold in the water. Um, so these feathers are essentially a dry suit for penguins. So oh, they, the only areas on her body that are not feathered is that beak um, right around her eyes and her little feet. What do you think? Oh, she talks a lot too, huh? Yes, she has a lot to say. So she is hand raised. Um, and so she is not quite sure if I'm a giant penguin or she's a teeny human. <laughs> but um, as she gets older, That's she'll... Yeah, uh, yeah, as she gets older, she'll realize she's a penguin and she'll start being more interested in penguins. But for now, she still wants to hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, she's adorable. Yes, yeah, she, she is. is. Absolutely. She is. I wonder um, if she... I bet you she'd like the V&A. Oh, do you yeah. think so? Yeah, uh -huh. I do think so. It goes really well with herring. Well, that's what they eat for <laughs> yeah. breakfast. Yeah, so, so it's yeah, not, yeah. that's perfect. Right yeah, that's morning. perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little wine and a little nip in the morning is not a bad thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take right, some yeah. with us. We'll try tomorrow. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. Thank well, you. Thank you. We'll let you guys get back to it. Thanks okay. for having us. Nice hip. <laughs> Remember, we're, uh, we're donating today, so www.tpz. S. S dot, dot info. info. <laughs> Give is generously. There, is there a pip page? Can we get a pip page? We need yeah. a pip page. Good idea. A nip Maybe. for pip. Nip for nip pip. For okay, pip. let's do a nip, nip for, for pip. pip. We are going to, uh, we're going to move into um, the first wine uh, on uh, the VIP uh, list. This is called A to Z. Um, it's an Oregon wine. Uh, this is a group of uh, winemakers that I think they I think they got the idea on a on a on a bar napkin. Um, but they they basically uh, they stole my idea. Probably, yeah, the absolutely. Idea for the, wine? the best part is is it's a it's a oh. screw top. Um, <laughs> absolutely unbelievable wines. They uh, they source their fruits um, and their whole their whole endeavor is to make the best available wines that they can um and and regardless of where they're sourcing their fruit so um it's uh they're beautiful labels uh beautiful wine to talk about and the rosé and i know that we're coming off of summer however we do have a couple more months of it and a rosé is always always uh, uh enjoyable with friends so now Ooh, these, and you get this amazing. fine wine at Brolum's? You can get this fine wine at Brolum's, uh, absolutely. All of these wines are available at Brolum's, uh, as well as the cheese and, uh, and fruits that we're pairing. So um, nice this a rosé is going to wonderful, going to wonderful, there's good English, huh? My, uh, my teacher would be so proud. So uh, uh, rosés are, are absolutely delightful with, uh, with fruit, uh, with, a, with uh, strawberries. Um, what else we got in here? Some blackberries. Strawberries, very, very much so, um, and the uh, and the Ooh. the grapes. It should absolutely brighten this, mm. and it should be delicious. So, wow. I guess I'm gonna um. have to use my fingers. I want to prove it to no, myself. We, okay, well, you we do have um, you know, be a little uncouth, but we do have some nice little you know. Oh, that's you know. better. Yeah. Okay. Well, Is leave, there it, an leave it to charge? an attorney to to uh, <laughs> to uh, <laughs> not be following the rules. <laughs> Very nice. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, that's a nice rosé. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, uh, you know, they, A to Z does uh, multiple different um, flavors. They have a, a beautiful Pinot Noir and a Pinot Gris. Mm -hmm. Both of those are out of Oregon. Um, this one, I, uh, and I apologize, this one is actually out of Oregon juice also. Um, but uh, the really neat thing about uh, A to Z is they're also, they're uh, a B certified, a Corp, B Corp. 
which is um, uh, there should be on read read your tasting notes. There should be a whole thing on a B Corp. Are you familiar? You're an attorney. Do you know what a B Corp is? I, indeed, I do. But uh, we don't want to discourage our audience from reading their cheat sheet. Okay. Well, then why don't you? Or the, you could just mm. tell them about uh, uh, the rating from wine enthusiasts at 90. That will point them in the right direction. Absolutely. But do you know what a B Corp is? I want to I want to highlight that no, part. I only know what an A and C are. Okay. Well, a certified B Corp is uh, they are completely uh, sustainable. So they uh, and they are encouraged. Uh, they go through a certification process, so they're completely transparent with uh, with all of with all of their books, with all of their corporate uh, mandates. They're completely sustainable. Um, it, it it's it's an, it, I don't know enough about it to to speak completely uh, legible about it, but please read up on it. It's a it's a, a very very fascinating uh, 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 certification. And, and they are they are uh, one of the only companies that I know that has that certification, and they're very very proud of it. Yeah, the so, notes suggest, as they will see, it says uh, named as a best for the World B Corp four years in a row. Yes, 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 absolutely outstanding. So um, a B Corporation, uh, they have a, a huge following. Um, again, please look that one up. I don't, I can't speak very well towards it. I, I failed in my homework, I guess. So, uh, anyway, Rosé, beautiful wine, beautiful wine to get a day started. It's absolutely wonderful when it's a hot weather day out, especially when you're standing under lights in the middle of a studio. Yes. So, uh, uh, it, 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 uh, delightful. These are wines in the wild. They are. Right. We're in the absolutely. wild. We're in the wild. wild. Okay. In the wild. Yes, absolutely. With Pip. With, with, with the penguin, the with the penguin, yes. yes. I got to pet a penguin. <laughs> I've never petted a penguin before. Uh, and look, look at that! Look at that bottle, by the way. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful, and it's a hand painted one. So this is one that you could actually take to uh, a, a potter and have them melted down for a cheese cheese plate, mm -hmm. right? So. I really like at the end how this one the the notes indicate that that the honey and the honeysuckle. And the sweet tea, and I really get that at the end. Really? Because a lot of the rosé... I don't get the sweet tea, but I'm not mm -hmm. exactly sure what that flavor would be in my palate. But mm -hmm. Plus, I think it says sweet pea. Tea. I pea. say <laughs> tea. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, on the VIP package, we are starting with... And I should have prefaced this, I guess, at the beginning. We're starting with the rosé. You should be moving into uh, the cinder uh, dry viognier. The, uh, the third wine um, we're going to be introducing is a Chardonnay. So this is a Jordan Chardonnay. This is a 2016, I believe, or did we move to the 17? Oh, boy, I'm way off. 2018. So uh, this, and this one will be uh, carrying to the next uh, flight also. Jordan, founded in uh, seven, or 1970. Sixes um, by a family uh, who wanted to make uh, uh, an unbelievable uh, Burgundy style, Burgundy and Bordeaux French style wines. They only produce two styles or two wines. They do a Chardonnay and they do a Cabernet. Um, and they wanted they wanted to bring the French Chateau experience to uh, to Sonoma. So it's it's located in Alexander Valley. It is. Uh, a uh, phenomenal winery that incorporates uh, uh, on-premise dining. They've got uh, they got all of their barrel rooms, tasting rooms. Everything's within the within the chalet, and it's all covered in in vine. It's absolutely gorgeous, and uh, probably the most uh, posh uh, winery I've ever stayed at. Really? And and uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I I uh, I took uh, or I didn't take. I went down there with. Uh, Todd and Gina from the Snake Bite oh, yes. a couple years ago. So, uh, unbelievable wine. They uh, again want to be true uh, to the French style. So this is very much a uh, a Grand Cru style wine. So this will be very very well balanced. It'll have very very good oak and uh, and fruit on it. Um, it's going to be a slightly yellow color because of the oak on on it. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Very nice. Uh, this should be right around a 14, 14 and a half percent uh, alcohol would be my guess from smelling it. And I can't read it. I'm not going to get my eyeballs out either. Um, 
but so yeah, so very much a, a French style wine. Um, this will pair absolutely beautiful with the brie. This will pair. This will even go with the uh, with the uh, uh, blue cheese. But this will pair wonderfully with the brie. Um, what is this one? <gasps> Ooh. What have you? That apricot ginger would have been perfect with that. We should have tried that Ooh. with the uh, rosé. It's not too late. Well, we can come back to it, right? That's <laughs> now why. You're talking. That's the whole idea of this. So this, the brie will be absolutely delicious with this. I have um, to be out of here by two a.m. Two a.m. Hey, we're going to be right. Oh, we have a raw. Sh I didn't see this one either. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that one also. So, so Chardonnay um, works really well with with uh, with uh, fatty uh, foods also. Mm -hmm. Um, because of the uh, the oak and the butter presence within it, so that's why it works really, really well with like salmon um, and trout because it has that fat content in the fish um, that will help hold up to the body. So a Chardonnay is is your your largest body white wine that we that that uh, that people are going to be familiar with. Travis, I often heard it said that Chardonnay is the go-to white wine but that its popularity had fallen off and is coming back? Is there any substance, any there, truth There to is that? a little bit of truth to that, but but you're also looking at levels that are, I mean, it, Chardonnay is your number one white wine in the world, right? So if it loses 2%, it's still gonna be the number one white wine in the world, right? So um, it is considered one of the, uh, the fine wines. Uh, Chardonnay, um, that we're going to be talking about a little French competition a little later on with one of our reds, but there was a French competition. Could we they, hurry? We're, we're getting there. <laughs> yes, I know your taste too. Um, anyway, we're getting to the, uh, there was a competition where uh, a, a gentleman came through and did a, a ta blind tasting from Chardonnays from Napa Valley and Chardonnays from uh, France. And they did a blind tasting in 76 and uh, uh, Napa Valley won. The Chardonnay. Oh, wow. They also won the Cabernet, but we'll get to that one a little later. This is from Alexander Valley, right on the other side of the hill, which is Sonoma, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and again, I go back to it. it's the most beautiful property you'll ever see. They make outstanding wines. This is a ninety what two? On uh, it doesn't say. Do we not have a, list, not a rating on this one no. listed. This oh. is uh, with, this is a brand new vintage for us, so I, I believe it's a ninety two. I'd have to look it up. Yeah. Um, this this is uh, I should bring out this. This is also part of the Russian River Valley. So um, Sonoma, turn around. Okay, so Sonoma, Sonoma's here, Napa Valley's here, and there's a mountain range. And, and if you would ignore the wiggling butt, um, we have the ocean here and we have San Francisco here. So this is an area down here between the two that's called Carneros, which is very, very popular for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. But right in the middle of this, we have a, a river called the Russian, turn called the Russian River Valley, okay? And it is, uh, yes, you take a bow, yeah. Uh, it is a, uh, a premier spot in Sonoma for growing Chardonnay, for growing uh, uh, Pinot Noir. So, and that's where they're pulling the grapes out of this, for this one. That, that very nice. That region goes from Santa Rosa, I believe, or starts just, just west of that, all the way to the coast. So, what does it mean when it says a Grand Cru Chablis? Okay, is that so, a style? So that is a style. So okay. from uh, 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 Burgundy, which is in France, mm -hmm. right? Um, they only make two kinds of wines over there, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Okay. And, and the Grand Cru is the creme de la creme. Okay, yeah, so yeah. that. Uh, Chablis, Chablis would be a, a, a style of Chardonnay from that okay. area. Yeah, absolutely. It's very, I hope I, I, hope I got balanced. that correct. I, very equal. I might have answered that. Uh, we'll move on. Gonna okay, we're going to move on. All right. <laughs> no, more don't, 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 no more questions. Yes. No more questions. No more questions. <laughs> Thank okay. you, everyone, for your attention. <laughs> Enjoy the rest uh, of what, your You evening. like it? Was it yes. Is it fun? Isn't it great with the with yeah. the cheese yes. uh, and the salamis? It just, uh, again, good. all of that stuff is available through Rollums, uh, both the wine and the cheese. Mm -hmm. And, of course, what are we doing? When you're talking about the cheeses, you're not talking about us, are you? Yeah. Well, you maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what are we doing here? What are we doing here? What is this all for? I think it's for Pip. For it's for Pip. It, right, and for a little the Pip, Pip right there, right? So, Pip. again, Pip we're going to hit it up. www.tpzs.info. <laughs> right, there we go. All right, okay. Um, we're going to move on. <laughs> Give generously. So, this from... is a great sacrifice that we're doing this, you know. <laughs> 
You're killing me. All right, so uh, we've gone uh, at this point through the VIP package now. We've gone uh, the date night wines. So we have the uh, the Cinder Viognier. We have uh, the Cinder Cinder uh, uh, Valentin. Uh, we've had the A to Z Rosé, and we've had the Jordan Chardonnay. So for the VIP package, we're next going to go run into um, Whitehall Lane Merlot. You got to put that there so they can see the label. I yeah, think. Well, no, no, no. I, no, you did, I know where it. my markers are. Oh, you stand okay. back, young man. <laughs> so anyway, so over. right there is my marker, and Whitehall Lane is a winery founded mm -hmm. in the '70s um, by two brothers. I'm going to pour oh, this is. and we'll put it back in the in the shot again. Um, Whitehall Lane, uh, founded in the '70s by two brothers. It was since sold. Um, I am just like doing well. Their, their yeah. names weren't White and Hall, were they? <laughs> no, I'll no, but try. good try. Darn but it. good try. So, so the the winery again by the two brothers. Um, they named it off of the lane uh, in Napa Valley that is on the southern part of their property. Um, there was a, a barn oh, nice. because it was it was planted in the 1880 areas. Uh, Napa Valley was. Um, there's a barn on the property from the early, early 1900s that is still used today uh -huh. that they use uh, for farm equipment and whatnot. Um, the winery was, uh, was purchased, I want to say in the 90s, um, by, uh, uh, by a group that I am, I'm escaping their names. Um, but they, uh, they brought in, they brought in uh, uh, new winemaking techniques. They've, they've yeah. purchased uh, uh, several more uh, vineyards. Uh, they've done, they've, they've upgraded everything, uh, and the wines are speaking for themselves. I think this is a 91. 91. 91 yes. point wine from the, the Wine uh, Spectator. Um, is it Wine Spectator or Robert Parker? Yeah. Wine Enthusiast. I'm way off on all three of them. Yeah. Anyway, so a 91 point wine. Um, uh, I, and I'm not going to talk about retails and on any of this, although it is available at Brolem's Fine Foods. Brolem's right Fresh here Foods. In Brolem's this area, in town. Right? Yes, yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so Merlot. So Merlot is is one of the, right? It's one of the one of the main red grapes that most people know about, right? Uh, although it got really really famous in the movie Sideways. Sideways. When I will not drink Merlot, and uh, uh, Merlot Merlot took a, a just a nosedive. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't give a bottle of Merlot away. Uh, it's coming back. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. uh, you know it's a it's a beautiful wine in its mm, own it's right. Nice. It's um, it, it, yeah, it can be. It can be extremely tannic if it's made in certain ways. So um, it it can be a, a, a yeah. hard wine to approach. It can, but this one is just. It's got a nice balance. It's got a lot of tannin to yes, it. it. I'm surprised at the oaky taste in it. I wasn't expecting that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Some oak. One of the ways that, uh, by the way, one of the fun ways to ever tell how tannic a wine is. So after you swallow it, tip your head down, <laughs> close your mouth, and see how much saliva builds up. Yeah. And if it's just like pouring out of your mouth, as in it, like this one, it's yeah. really, really tannic. Do you tannic, know how so. many people at home are doing that right now? Well, I hope so. Yeah, that would be a good, <laughs> good risk mop the floor afterwards, okay? And so don't, don't so think what, about a pink flamingo. Don't even think about a pink God. flamingo. <laughs> Andrea, well, what this kind for of- the zoo, you know. This is a question for your daughter. What kind of cheese should we go with this? Mm. What do you think? The brie. Yeah, actually, that would be that would be good. Yeah, absolutely. Although I would uh, I would suggest one other. Try the try the uh, uh, the uh, blue cheese. What kind of blue cheese is that too? By the way, it is uh, blue, silly Danish Castello blue, mm. with fresh honey. What? I don't have my glasses on. Honeycomb? Is that right? Honeycomb? That's what it says. Yeah, fresh honeycomb. Okay, <laughs> that's what it says. Well, that sounds yummy. All right. Would would Pip like honeycomb? Pip? Probably not. Here. Okay, all right. <laughs> She's more into the fish side of things, right? Okay, all right. And Viognier. We know she likes Viognier. Okay, all right. That's very nice. I can't wait to meet the the other. We have another, There's another? special guest coming up. But, but, but no, no, but not right now. No, but we oh. have, we do have a seat oh. right out there. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No, I can't see out there. Okay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I see out there. Oh. It's a big cat. <laughs> oh, or a rabbit. Oh, curiosity is there. What is that? Oh, yeah. What well, is that? It's coming up pretty soon. We better All right. have some more wine. Those are. We better at have home. some more wine. Absolutely. So, so one of the <laughs> things to try, Andrea, this yes. one, and you guys at home try this. So, when you get these big tannic wines, try them with some of the other stuff on the tray, especially like sweet. 
and see what apricot. happens when you have a strawberry and something like this, or a, the or apricot. a, uh, oh, is that an apricot? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So, cause see, no, no funny faces when excuse you do me. this. Excuse me. Okay. Now, now, just drink. Don't have the cheese. Now, put some wine in your mouth. How about some garlic? Uh, that actually will be perfect with this. But let's see how that how it does with the apricot. Come on. And the verdict is mm. completely changes it, doesn't it? Totally. Absolutely. So wow. at home, I want you to grab wow. a salt shaker. Real quick, like you're doing tequila. All right, a little salt. Put a little salt on your tongue and do the same thing yeah. with this wine. And then spit it out because you're you're gonna kill it. But um, it it's it's what we we uh, wow. what we like to do in the industry when we're when we're pairing food with uh, with wine at home. Try so just be. take different things on this tray. Mm -hmm. See what complements each other mm -hmm. with the tannins, without the tannins, with the sweet, without the sweet, salt, savory. And, and see what works, because it's an it's a absolutely fascinating process. And that's one of the reasons why wine is so much fun, mm -hmm. right? And food, of course. All right, should we move on to the next wine? Not yet. Not yet? Well, mm. okay. Okay, yeah. Do we no. have to? Or do we have well, a visitor we coming? <laughs> not yet. No, the visitor's not coming yet. We've got we to gotta leave see. something for the, the, the later suspense. this time. Well, I, yeah, I know, but let's leave it for a little okay, later on. Okay. Come on. Is there a visitor from go? the Idaho Falls Zoological Society? I think it is. One of this place. <laughs> yeah, see, because that's why we're doing wines in the wild, oh, right? right? See? Right. Yes, yes. That, was that the, oops, is that the name of our show? Wines in the wild. Uh, it is our name over so right. See, that's what's right behind you. See, hmm. look at that. Oh, Amazing. wines in the wild. And where do they go to donate more money? www.tpzs.info. There you go. Hey. See, she did it without right. even blinking this time. All right. <laughs> All right. So that uh, uh, Whitehall Lane. So in the heart of uh, uh, Napa Valley, yeah. um, uh, in in uh, in the region of Rutherford, on the road of uh, Whitehall, right. So now we're gonna go to um, Knights Valley, which is in Sonoma. Oops, I, that's gonna go that one right there. So uh, this is Arrowwood, uh, and it's a Knights Valley Cabernet. So Knights Valley is going to be in the upper north. No, I don't need you to turn around again. You'll start shaking your butt again. So the upper north uh, uh, east side of Sonoma. So uh, it absolutely divine Cabernet section. Okay, Knights Valley, Alexander Valley are two of my absolute favorite uh, Cabernet areas. Um, this one is a 2016. It is a 92 points on uh, wine enthusiasts. Mm. And available right here locally at Brolum's. Uh, absolutely, Brolum's Fresh Foods, absolutely. Okay, now I've seen the same three grapes, correct? But this is not a Bordeaux style. Cab well, but, okay, so that's a great question, Andrea. That's a really, really great question. So um, it is made with Cabernet Merlot and Malbec, okay, which is a Bordeaux style wine, right? And Bordeaux will have two, three, four, or five different grapes in it, right? But it's called a Cabernet, which means that 85% of that wine has to be Cabernet. Okay. Okay. Um, whereas if we are in Europe, uh, their old world style, they label their wines based off a geographical region. Yes. Okay. And we'll get to that on a couple more or in another wine later on. But so knowing that if you're an American or a new world or Australian new world wine, uh, if it's named for a varietal, it has to be depending on where you're at 75 or 85% that varietal. And then it'll, they'll mix in some other things. So, um, the and I don't know what the mix is on the Merlot and the Malbec on that one. I didn't uh, I didn't geek out that far on uh, when I was putting these. But that's notes something together. our our people yeah yes. our absolutely can get uh, get on on board and look at yes yeah. absolutely our viewing audience our yes. viewing audience can our do that our friends yes um let's see uh, cocoa powder and spice the notes suggest well let's mm -hmm. you know what let's. Mm -hmm. I don't have any insight wow. to this wow. winery. Um, uh, not insight. I mean, I don't have any. Very good. This is one of the few that I have not uh, uh, been to. Mm. But oh my God, it's just gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous juice. That the cocoa Excellent. powder. 
Yeah, it's mm. and the spice. So you've got a really, really. Let's talk about structure first, because you've got a really, really nice tannic mm. um, and acidic structure on the mouth. With, uh, with the fruit just lingering. So mm -hmm. that's telling you that's a very nice balanced wine. It will hold up very, very, very well to food, mm -hmm. okay? Um, especially, uh, again, to uh, fattier foods, uh, steaks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and it, oh boy, that, that it just lingers on the, on, the, on the palate. So that's just delightful. Yeah, I really do enjoy this. Yeah, this so, really nice. and then, uh, um, Mm, it Ooh. doesn't fall off at all. So, and then you got that, yeah, you were talking mm -hmm. some cocoa powder. Yeah, There's mm -hmm. some, uh, maybe some black currant, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of leather. Yes. Um, uh, remember, each, mm -hmm. you're tasting wine, so each and every one of these things is your own experience. It has nothing to do with us. Um, I actually attended a uh, Italian wine tasting once with a professional rep uh, from that company. Oh, you're and starting she, to embarrass me And now. she described her wine uh, and it ended up being an off flavor, but she, or off wine, but she ended up describing it as wet frogs, <laughs> um, which was interesting because I've never been across that one before. Um, but I've also come across, you know, people that describe granite, wet granite, wet cement, and I'm not sure about you, but I've never gone around and started wet licking cement. wet cement. No. But um, you know, I guess each to their own, right? Is, is our special guest? Is he? Is she or he? It. He. he. Oh, he. Okay, Does he so have a name? he's get, he's getting he's getting prepped. He's getting his makeup on. <laughs> okay, so we're getting ready to. Okay, so, make an appearance. So again, um, I like the Merlot. This is a very. Well, that's my next question. What? How did we get a giraffe in the building? Well, they they did it through the garage, oh, okay. I think, and then I think they took a wall out. Uh, right. I see. Okay. <laughs> I'm so, more worried about the cat that's over there. So. <laughs> oh you know. oh oh. What about the rabbit in the corner? Oh, oh the rabbit. Okay. Well, yeah. Hopefully, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Keep drinking. Yeah. Okay. So uh, on this one, let's go to. Um, ooh, let's try the sheep's. The sheep's. Oh yeah, this would be really nice with that. Mm. This has been a sleeper mm. for me. I enjoy mm. this. Yeah. I've enjoyed them all, but this one was a this sleeper This is a slow, to me. a slow drinker. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, let's mm. drink faster. No. <laughs> mm. That's very nice. Oh god, that's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. And where can you buy this locally? Brolum's? We sound like an infomercial. You know <laughs> yeah. that, right? Okay. All right. Um, at Brolum's Fresh Foods. All right, so guys. So, uh, on... What did we do different? Okay. So, we have, we have two more wines to introduce um, for the executives. Uh, the, the, our executive basket. And... I needed to know. Do you need a fresh wax? No. Yes. Jordan. Okay, so that's that one. So, all right. So Jordan. Uh, all right. Whitehall. Just twelve okay, more though. Okay. So we got rid of this one. And we'll put them back here. We're okay. Yep. We're gonna keep that one. We're gonna get rid of that one. You're not refilling them back there, are you? Well, you know what? With you, who knows? Um, <laughs> So this one, this one was just a, uh, we just, I had the opportunity to play with some other wines, so we played with some other wines. So um, this one is extremely special. This is, uh, this will be on the executive package um, that we have out. So we've taken out the, uh, the rosé uh, and we took out the, uh, uh, the Arrowwood Cabernet. So we've replaced the Arrowwood with, uh, Claude Duval, okay? Mm. Claude Duval founded in 19, let's see, their first vintage was 1972, okay? This was a, uh, uh, they, 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 they searched and searched and searched and searched to find the proper vineyard, and they, they, they finally landed in a place called Stag's Leap, which is in Napa Valley, oh, okay? Yeah. So yeah. Stag's Leap yeah. is gonna be on the, the western side of, uh, of uh, uh, Napa Valley, sure. right? Okay, so you have the main highway, you're back again, the main highway, and then we have uh, the trail highway, which both border right. on Napa mm -hmm. Valley, right? right? Sure. So it's on the southern part of, of, of Napa Valley. It's called the Stag's Leap District, okay? Their first vintage, 1972, was one of the 10 wines uh, Cabernets that were sent to France oh, wow. to do the blind tasting, right? Mm -hmm. They won. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not know Me. that. So, Claude Duval won the Cabernet, Chateau Montalena, 
uh, out of Napa Valley won the Chardonnay, um, and the French were absolutely devastated. Wow. Ten years later, they did they revisited this whole tasting thing, Happen and again. they won again. So you know, <laughs> awesome. hey. So we obviously us uh, Americans oh. kind of know what we're doing. Yeah, so kinda. here we go. Kind of. So this is an estate Napa Valley Cabernet, oh. 2015. Um, from looking at it, I'm going to say we're probably at about 15, 15 and a half on alcohol. Um, but I'll know a little bit more once we taste it. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to notice some fantastic legs on this. Mm -hmm. What, are, Andrea, do you know what legs tell us? Yes. What do legs tell us? The depth. Besides that you're tall. The depth, the tannins. Not tannin, but you're getting close, yeah. The... Depth would be a word to say it. Legs will actually tell me what the viscosity of the wine is. What it... Uh, the alcohol, alcohol content. Content is it. Yes, absolutely. So the more the more legs, which is the rivlets, right? Everybody knows There's legs. There's not right? enough. There's there not enough? Like, no. I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's this on that? Yeah, what does that say? Could you pour some more? Wines in the wild. Yeah, is that what we're doing? Oh my goodness! Yes, yeah. and we already we yeah, already met Pip. Doing? We might have to bring Pip back up again, is it yeah. this so for she the can say Idaho hi. Idaho Falls Zoo. It is for the, the Idaho Where do we Falls go? Zoo. And the Zoological w -W? Society. The Zoological yeah. Society, and and guys, it, it, Ori said at the very beginning, this is a, a non. I mean, with COVID, you it, yes. they rely on donations. We haven't been able to do Boo at the Zoo. We haven't been able to do uh, uh, the Wines in the Wild traditionally. They came up with this idea, um, idea, but we need to ask for a little bit more. Yeah. So Be as generous. much as you can. Yeah. As much as you can. And get your friends to donate. Yes. Is this going to, Lori, is this going to be on, uh, how, can, how can they tell their friends where to go? Are they going to go, oh, you know what, I mean, they're going to go to, to the www. www. Idaho Falls Zoological <laughs> Society. TPZ, yes. That one. Toughest. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, oh, my, oh my, I lost it. Okay. TPZ. We got you. But is that on, is that, Lori, is that on Facebook? We can put it on Facebook. Yeah. I think it would be a great idea if we had it on Facebook. Nip, yeah, maybe. Yeah. We're going to add it to Facebook, it appears. So check. Yeah. Well, I'll put it on my Facebook. Would you I put it on do. your Facebook? Absolutely. Okay. All right. What's so, Facebook? <laughs> well, at your age, who knows? It's probably a we'll gray slate with we'll a chisel. <laughs> okay. Uh, all uh, right, Travis so is going to excuse himself now. We're back. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so we're back to Claude Duval. So this is a... Mm, let's get into some drinking some of this mm -hmm. one. All right. It is very nice. Mm, I'm going to have to try some blue cheese with this one. Mm. This would taste particularly... Well, I think mm. in France. If we were to go to France. You mm. know what? I think if you buy the ticket, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> however, we only have to go to Napa Valley for this one. Mm. I like it. That is nice. Are you approving? Mm. 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 I don't oh, think he likes it. That's a happy it. dance. Okay. We need some blue cheese. He doesn't like it. Oh. Mm. Wow. That is young. Nice. Yeah, so that's mean. a 2015. Um, that is a... Very you could lay that one down for a while. Um, That's a very sensitive microphone, you know. Yeah, well, you know, okay. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, that uh, that whole slurping thing is uh, approved in yes, wine drinking. Why would you do that, Andrew? Oh, I was just calling it to the attention of our viewing audience. Oh, thank flavors. you very much that I'm, I'm being insensitive. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't want right. anyone to think for why would I? Moment. Why would I be doing that? Your, the flavors. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I'm aerating, instead of using an aerator on the table or a decanter, I'm aerating it in my mouth. Yeah. And that actually brings a whole other level of taste to your uh, palate, so... Because we oh, only have yeah. four taste sensors, but we have 256 smell. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. More than you, that. You heard it here first. Okay. Yeah. He's an attorney. Let Pip? me preface that one. He's, he is a lawyer. <laughs> we'll ask Pip. We'll, we'll just, we're going to leave you at that one. Check okay. your olfactory epithelium. Do we have epithelium. anybody visiting us yet? Mm. Hmm? Is anyone here to visit us yet? Not, not well. Should we? Do we yeah. want to bring in? I think uh, it's do, What do you think? Oh, okay. Okay, let's, let's, okay we're just a half a sec. We got one more wine anyway, right? So we'll do one more wine. Um, only one? Oh, huh? Only one? Yeah, only one. Okay, come on. Um, all right, we're going to do my favorite wine, or my, uh, my favorite style. And I, I think a lot of you mm. out there in our viewing audience have met me uh, and done some wine tastings with mm. me through the, through the years. That's so um, 
most of you might know or probably know that my parents are Ginny and Jerry Frizzell. They used to own Vino Rosso that used to be in town. Um, they preside in Italy and happens to be a, 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 a very big passion of mine is Italian wine. So this is our last wine on the executive package tonight. Do you need another glass? No, I'm all right on this. Um, this is a uh, 2015 uh, Banfi Brunello de Montalcino. This is a 100% uh, Sangiovese wine from the town of Montalcino uh, in the heart of Tuscany. So uh, I went and visited this winery a couple years ago. I think and, I was with you. Uh, I think I was there. Uh, yeah, 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 not on that one. Oh. <laughs> you were with me though in Italy <laughs> once, yeah. Uh, Adrian, I haven't Probably had the pleasure of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, we went north though to Italy. This is a little bit farther mm. south than you and I were at. So, um, so one of the things you're first going to notice about uh, uh, Brunello, or actually about even European wines, um, and, and definitely for Italian wines, they're going to be a little bit on the red wines. They're going to have a brown hue to them. Yes. So notice on the sides of Very it, earthy. they're going to be well. No, I mean just the color is going to be mm -hmm. brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to find that on a lot of uh, of European wines. Actually, most of red wines. Um, and it's because of the way that they're aging their wines in the big caskets. So this one is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, it's 100% it's Sangiovese, but it's actually a clone of Sangiovese called Sangiovese Grosso. And it is uh, uh, aged in oak for, I believe it's three years in oak, and then it's 18 months in a bottle before it's allowed to be released. Um, according to everything in Italy, and Europe actually is uh, by law. They can't they can't deviate from the laws mm -hmm. of each region. So hence why you have this this you know this wonderful thing that we all grew up with. The uh, that's a, a a label of guarantee at the level of the wine that, it, that they're presenting. So mm -hmm. this is the highest level. It means that it, it it has to have the right amount of grapes. It can only be. Uh, has to be stored in oak for so many years, in a bottle for so many years. Um, you're not so here. Yeah, it's wonderful. Isn't it nice? Mm. Oh, and and, and Brunello's, Brunello's, they're, they're, they age extremely well. Mm. So. Yeah, this is, this is nice. But it doesn't mean mm. we're coming to the end, no. does it? No, no not at all. No, we're coming to the end of the vino. Oh. Um, but we still have, well, then and I'm going to sit down and watch you eat all yes. the rest of the yes. cheese tonight is what we're going to do. Or Pip. We need Pip. To but, well, Pip's on the herring in the, okay. in the venue. Yeah, well, our so. next guest, maybe. Our next guest might the be. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, Brunello, <gasps> Brunello, it, it's what a beautiful winery. It's yeah. uh, by a couple, uh, let me get this out before our guest gets here. Um, mm -hmm. a, a, a couple family that they brought in some uh, a wine mm -hmm. in into the East Coast called uh, Riuniti. Oh, yes. Right? Riuniti on ice because yeah. it was... Do you remember the slogan? So nice. Yes. Oh, come so on. Nice. So nice. So nice. Anyway, um, uh, they, they have the Banfi Castle. And Hello. if I re remember correctly, Banfi is actually named after the great aunt. Um, if I, I believe she was the first uh, uh, major domo of the Vatican. Oh, Female oh, wow. major domo of the Vatican in the early 1800s or whenever that was. Nice. Um, I hope whenever. I didn't screw that one up. So, uh, <laughs> however, everybody, thank you very, very much for joining yes. us. I hope uh, that uh, you've enjoyed the wines. I hope that, I've, uh, that we've answered uh, most of the questions that you had liked uh, or had. Mm -hmm. If you have more, please speak up uh, and I will answer everything that I can. Please remember that everything's available at Brolum's Fresh Foods. We have all of the wine. If you can't find it on the shelf, ask a manager. They have the wonderful cheese and uh, uh, other platters that are available. And let through. us know what you get from these wines, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, please do. Uh, other cheeses and, and, and platters available for the holidays. Yes. Um, I want to thank both of you for sitting hey. through thank this. You. I know it was a really thank struggle all for too. all of you. Great suffering. You know, it was, it was I suffered. Tough. Yeah, suffer hard. Tough. Wonderful suffering. Um, we, uh, uh, I'm going to move all of the wine to the back. And we're going to move the cheese because we have a yes. special guest coming in just a second. Um, I'm going to actually give you this one because that one stays with me. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll go this way. You go that way. All right. So, again, uh, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, let's bring up, who's this one? This or, is Levi. Levi? This oh, is cool. Levi. <laughs> So Levi is one of our Bennett's Wallabies. He's about 10 months old. He's actually being hand raised right now. So we're doing that for a very, sure. 
if you're yeah if you're salty it's gonna lick you oh, um so we're doing that for a very important reason so wallabies and kangaroos macropods tend to be a little bit skittish and a little bit um a little bit nervous around people so by making sure that he's comfortable with us because he goes home with us at night um we carry him around in a little bag to simulate a pouch um the others will see him being comfortable with us and being being um kind of spoiled rotten getting snacks and things like that and and they will emulate that so it helps calm the entire mob down um just by hand raising a couple of these guys so does he like wine well, yeah. if, if there's some on your finger, it would appear so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, okay, I better watch the diet. Okay, sorry, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, so Levi, like I said, he's about 10 months old. Um, oh, yeah, here. I want you to come right here. Can, you, can he get on the table? Well, he might. He's, just, he's, a, good, good, he's right? a good hopper, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, well then yeah. just stand up right straight. That's just, we wanted to get you center screen here, so that, okay. that's all. Okay. So um, is, he, is he related to a, a kangaroo? Yes, they're they're sort of cousins, so they're in the they're in the same family, um, but they are different species. So okay. Bennett's wallaby is a subspecies of of other wallabies. Um, these guys are found in more temperate areas of eastern Australia, um, and they, like I said, they can be a little bit shy. So they actually usually live just in smaller groups, in in twos or threes. Um, but if resources are good and we're not having to fight for food there's there they will definitely be in bigger groups so levi here in the next month or so will be being introduced back into the mob um and that's important because it'll be about the same time that all the other wallaby joeys that we have will be getting kicked out of mom's pouch so he'll have little friends to to pal around with um but it will also mean that he is um, outside and acclimating to the weather before it turns super super cold so we're on a little bit of a tight timeline um but if you guys come see us in the next couple of weeks, you'll you might see one of our keepers carrying him around in a silly little purse looking thing. What are um, his claws like? What are they for? Lori, They're very you, long. Or they Dave, are, can so, you grab the pouch so that they everybody sees what what they what they uh, <laughs> run him around in? Um, so those claws, they, these guys eat things like roots and grasses. So um, it just helps them grip onto things and dig he's, stuff he's up. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good grip. Yep. So, you know, honestly, this would be. He would fit really well in there with a bottle of wine. Yeah, I bet he I would. Think so. Yeah, I think yeah. I bet he would. So, this, so you carry him around in this all day long. A keeper does. Yep. A keeper does. Yep. So um, I I kind of stole him from another keeper okay. today. So he's he's not oh, my charge oh. today. But what do we guys do at night? Um, he goes home with somebody every single night. Really? So, yep. Yep. So oh my goodness. We just transitioned him to two feedings a day instead of three. So now we're not having to to stay up late to feed him, um, which is probably why he's trying to lick us. He's like, guys, I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, so oh, he's transitioning adorable. to solid foods hey, really, really well. Um, one of his favorite things to do is, is lick you, is lick okay. me. Yeah, but okay. um, he likes to hop up to the bowl that we keep all of his dry food in and tip it over and then eat it off the floor. So we really try, but you know they've, they've got a mind of their own. So like I said, come see us. Um, come see Levi, and he'll be he'll be hanging out with us. Do are, are um, wallabies <laughs> at all included oh. in the petting zoo? No. No. Nope. Um, so this year, because of the coronavirus, our children's zoo, our contact yard, that's closed. Okay. Um, oh. Hopefully next year we'll get back to normal. <laughs> oh, um, but like I said, wallabies, wallabies oh, can be a little bit nervous. Um, we need so, a close up, right? For, oh, they took the camera off. Okay, never mind. All right, sorry. <laughs> so they are not in our in our contact yard. Oh. Oh, Apparently, he's like, very comfortable yeah, in front of the camera. Adorable. He is, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Oh, You're oh He's <laughs> More kisses. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Levi back home. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Lori. Sorry, I'm not. I'm gonna turn it over to our no. executive director, David <laughs> Pennock, um, and he is going to wrap things up for us. Thank, thank you. you very, Bye, very much. Levi. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Boy, thank you so much for supporting this special home what? edition of Wines in the Wild. I think we need to watch your hands. Oh, yes. Okay. I know all about that. I yeah. do work at a zoo, <laughs> after all. We sure appreciate the support. Uh, we're so proud of the continuing improvements and growth that happen at the zoo. I hope you all know that it's your investment in the zoo through, in, through fundraisers like this that make those improvements possible. So we just appreciate it so much. I would like to give a special thank you to Lori Gravatt, and her wonderful board of the Tafas Park Zoological Society that puts these events together. I uh, really want to thank Travis and Nick and Andrea for making the event so wonderful tonight. 
but uh, especially want to thank all of you. We hope you come to the zoo often. Admire the good work that happens because of your investment in the best little zoo in the West. So I hope you've had a wonderful night tonight, and thank you once again. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.